So I have grabbed your attention by saying that Manchester United should sign a player from a rival. The question is, which player is it? Who is it that is producing this exact heat map over there, which is looks almost perfect for what Manchester United need? Well, we're just going to get straight into it. It's Mateo Kovacic of Chelsea and Croatia. A player who normally might be kind of out of bounds, a difficult player to bring in, of course, with the history between Manchester United and Chelsea. Chelsea shouldn't want to sell to a, a big player to their rival, especially when you would imagine that both teams will be competing for a spot in the top four next season. However, Kovacic has just one year left on his contract with the club, and with Chelsea under their new owner, happy to spend a, a, a billion pound a week on new players, I would imagine that they're going to sign a lot of players again in the summer. So maybe players like Kovacic are not going to get that contract extension, and that is how it looks at this moment in time. And that's why I wonder if Manchester United might be having a look at bringing him into their left-sided midfield position. And let me just kind of prefix this whole video by saying one thing. For me, Kovacic is the most underrated midfielder in this generation. I think he is absolutely incredible. Yes, he has been hampered by injuries throughout his career. We will come back onto that. But as a footballer, he is simply sublime. So let's take a look at what he would bring to this team. So the first thing which Kovacic would bring to this team, and it's the thing which initially gets me really, really excited, is press resistance. There are not many midfielders in the world that are better at dropping, receiving the ball to play, uh, with back to play in this area, turning and moving forward, or dropping a shoulder, selling the opponent a dream, and therefore progressing the ball. We've said it time and time again, Manchester United do not currently have that profile in the team. Kovacic has it, in abundance. For me, perhaps Frankie de Jong is, only, is the only more press-resistant midfielder in the world. I think Kovacic is so, so good in this position. Whether that's dropping in kind of as a solo six into this position or moving from more of a left-sided central midfield area, Kovacic is just so, so good. The, his awareness of his surroundings, the way which he scans before he receives the ball, means that he is always ready and always aware of where the opposition is coming from. And that allows him to perfectly drop a shoulder or turn or use some quick footwork to move the ball away from the opponent and into a better position for himself. And like I said, it just makes him incredibly press resistant. And this is something which United are crying out for. So first box, a massive tick. As well as having this press resistance in terms of, you know, he can drop a shoulder and carry the ball. He's also very good at passing under pressure as well. Something else which United struggle with. We talk a lot about the need for a player which can dribble under pressure, but United also need a midfielder which can pass the ball in these situations. Casemiro is okay at it, although at times his passing is quite sloppy. We know that Fred isn't great under pressure, and McTominay isn't a great passer either. Eriksen is probably the best of the bunch in this sort of situation. Kovacic is the best. Kovacic, in terms of if he was to sign for United, would be the best midfielder at receiving the ball in these deeper areas and knitting the play with short passing. Again, it's another area where he's really very good, and therefore, if he was brought into the team, he would drastically, drastically improve Manchester United's ability to play the ball out from the back. Imagine you're also combining that with a ball-playing centre-back and a ball-playing goalkeeper. It could really level up Manchester United's ability tenfold. He would be such a good player for these sorts of positions. Now, Kovacic also has so much more to offer than just that. Yes, he is great at dropping into these deeper areas, but he is also so, so good in the middle third and also pretty decent in the final third. All round, he is just technically a very secure player. He's one of the best players in the world at receiving the ball in confined situations, shifting the ball up his feet and moving the ball. He will take the ball under almost any situation. It really doesn't bother him. He is a magnet always wants the ball and that is again what United need. Someone who is just comfortable in almost any situation with short range passing, medium range passing but also dribbling, close control, taking the ball under pressure. Kovacic ticks every box from a technical point of view. Technically he is so so sound and maybe better than any Manchester United player apart from Lissandra Martinez and Luke Shaw. Even then I would make the argument that he is better. Technically, he is just so, so good. And this means that he works in a load of different systems. Because he is such a well-rounded fundamental player, he can do a lot of different jobs. For example, let's say Manchester United are in a 3-1 shape, for example, with the fullbacks perhaps a little bit higher on this uh, particular occasion. Kovacic is the sort of player which can play not a constant solo pivot role, but he can drop into this position here and be the solo pivot in front of the defence. Let's say you want to move into more of a 2-3 shape, Kovacic is more than happy to drop into these slightly wider positions. Again, he doesn't want to spend all his time here, 
but he is more than comfortable on occasion dropping into these positions and rotating with those players around him. He is also happy in more of a 4-3-3 situation to push further forward into the half space and kind of act alongside Bruno Fernandes where there's a bit more emphasis on being creative, getting forward and doing stuff in the final third. Kovacic is more than capable of doing all these different roles. However, the role which might suit him most is in a 3-2-5, a shape which Ten Hag uses very often. And it looks something like this. Let's say United, how are we going to approach it? Let's say United are going to do it like this. Let's put United in this sort of 3-2-5 shape like so. This is where Kovacic could really, really thrive. And there's a couple of reasons for this. The main reason, though, is that Kovacic's best days at Chelsea in his career came under Thomas Tuchel, who used what shape? A 3-4-3. Three, three. Something which Manchester United, in open play, look to do on a really regular basis. This is where Kovacic has thrived at his best in his career. The left side of a double pivot in a 3-2-4-1 or a 3-2-5 or a 3-4-3. And this is the exact job which Eric Ten Hag could ask of him. From this position, he is absolutely brilliant. Again, at pretty much everything that you would want on the ball. In terms of if we're talking about his passing, the pass as attempted, in my opinion, is very important, ranking in the 91st percentile. I say it quite a lot that United need someone to orchestrate the move, dictate the play, slow play down when it's needed, but also speed it up when it's needed. That is something which Kovacic does really very well. He is a dictator. He dictates the play from the middle of the pitch. What we can see towards the bottom is that his long pass is a little bit low. We would like to see that increase. However, I think that's more due to tactical instruction rather than an inability to do so. It's just not something which Chelsea have done. However, in general, his passing numbers are very, very good. And again, importantly, that comes whether he's under pressure or with time on the ball. He nearly always picks the right pass. Now, sometimes that will mean taking his time on the ball, taking a couple of extra touches, slowing it down and just playing a simple four yard pass to his side or, or even backwards. It might mean moving the ball out wide into a safer area like that. However, he is also more than capable of moving the ball through the middle of the pitch with progressive vertical passes, which cut out opposition players. Let's say the opposition have kind of got their midfield three like this. Kovacic is the sort of player which can take all three of them out of the game with one pass into a player in the half space. Kovacic is just so, so good with his passing. However, his ability to progress the ball doesn't stop there because we haven't even mentioned his ability to carry the ball yet. Yes, he is very, very good at doing it in his own defensive third, having that press resistance, dropping a shoulder and evading pressure to move away. But he's also very good at it in the middle third as well. We can see for carries, he ranks in the 92nd percentile, progressive carrying distance, the 89th percentile, and also interestingly, the 83rd percentile for carries into the final third. And again, it's something I say a lot on the channel because we're desperately searching for a midfielder for the club. Kovacic is very good at driving through the pitch, something which United do not have. Casemiro is not a great ball carrier. Bruno Fernandes is not a great ball carrier. Eriksen, Fred, Sabitzer, none of them are great ball carriers. Maybe McTominay is the best at the moment. Kovacic, again, just completely, completely blows all of the others out of the water with his ability to carry the ball forward. And again, this is an important thing in a team in the modern day where defensively, a lot of teams have some really rigid and stubborn setups. A lot of the time, they'll go man for man in the midfield. The ability to win your individual duel in a man to man system, it breaks the opposition's defensive structure. So this is why Kovacic could be so, so useful. Now, what you might have noticed is that the take-ons attempted and things like that are a little bit low up the top there. And this is something we've seen in the past 12 to 18 months. Kovacic has reduced his take-ons. Do I know why? Genuinely, I don't. I'm not sure why this is the case. In past seasons, he's been very, very good at dribbling his way past players to carry the ball forward. We're not seeing it as much at the moment. Now, it could be for a few reasons. It could be through fear of injury. Again, something we'll come back onto later on in the video. It could be tactical instruction. It could just be a poor environment. If we look at Chelsea over the past 12 months, particularly the last, what, eight or nine months, it's a bit of a messy situation. They change managers on quite a regular basis, so maybe it's just, again, tactical instruction, but mixed signals. Tuchel's asking him to do one job, and then Potter asks him to do a different job, and then Lampard asks something different. It, that might be some of the problem, because the whole club is disjointed. We can see the whole thing's a mess. He hasn't had the playing time that he would want at times this season, so that could also be a massive factor as well. I think some of these factors are also at play for his reasonably low shot-creating actions. This is basically the different ways in which you're creating shots um, in the final third of the pitch. And again, we can see Kovacic doesn't rank 
incredibly well at this. He's decent at it. Again, I think he has been more creative in the past. I think he's been nullified a bit in the past year or so. So, that's something which Ten Hag would need to keep an eye on if he was brought into the club. You know, can he create in the final third if he's create, uh, replacing Ericsson? There is a, a need to do that to an extent. However, if we're talking about Manchester United next season, having more technical players in their team, again, perhaps a goalkeeper, a ball-playing centre-back, a ball-playing midfielder like Kovacic, maybe a striker, whatever it may be, United will be better all round as a team, which means creativity will come from all over the pitch rather than one area. So Kovacic not being the most creative midfielder in the world, I don't think would be a problem. And also, I think we would see him improve in a better team, in a better system. So again, I wouldn't worry about it too much. For me, on the ball, Kovacic is literally perfect for what Eric Ten Hag needs. In my opinion, apart from maybe Luka Modric... And even so, probably more so than Modric. I think he's the closest thing to Frankie de Jong currently on the market. On top of all of this, Kovacic is also really good out of possession as well. He's used to playing in sides which press high up the pitch under someone like Tuchel. But he's also very accustomed to sitting slightly deeper at times. Again, it's something that Chelsea done at times under Tuchel. And it's also a job which he has had to do for Croatia as well. Again, it's something he's done really, really well. He isn't a, a, a ball-winning midfielder by any means, but he does work hard, he does press high, and he does cover a lot of ground. And again, this is something which we know which Eric Ten Hag would need in his side. Apologies if you can hear some sort of machinery um, outside. Not much I can do about it. But I think you guys get the picture with Kovacic. I'm a massive, massive fan. He's one of my favourite midfielders on the planet, and I think he is so, so good. From a technical point of view, I think he ticks every single box which Eric Ten Hag needs. From a tactical point of view, I think he ticks pretty much every single box. From a psychological and mental point of view, I think he ticks all the boxes. The question that I have personally is from a physical point of view. Where the injuries is a slight problem. These are injuries from the past four or five seasons. There's also another page of these as well, which we won't go into. They kind of stem back to his Real Madrid days a little bit. But he does pick up injuries. And that is a concern. Because Eric Ten Hag needs players which he can rely on. And also, the fact that he is 29 years old. Now, I'm fully aware that 29 years old is not that old at all. He could still have six years at the top. The problem that I have, though, is that if we look through the midfielders, I've got it written down here. If United signed Kovacic, you would have Kovacic at 29 years old, Bruno Fernandes at 28 years old, and then Casemiro and Eriksen, both at 31 years old at the time of recording. It's just a little bit concerning to have that many players at that age. Having one or two 30 year old midfielders isn't a problem, experience is very very important and like I said they'll still be at the top level for a few more years but to have kind of your four main midfielders all around the age of 30 would be a little bit concerning. And honestly this is where I need your help now. Get in the comments down below, let me know what you think. Like I said from every other point of view I think he is perfect and I think it's absurd that Chelsea are even considering letting him go. He's unbelievably good as a footballer. He is unbelievable. He improves most teams on the planet, apart from probably Manchester City. I think he gets in every other, every other single team on the planet, apart from City and Real Madrid. He really is that good. So, why are Chelsea letting him go? I'm not sure, but, you know, the whole Chelsea conversation is for another day. In terms of Kovacic to Manchester United, I would be looking at it. The fact that he's got one year left on his contract suggests that you can probably get him for about £20 million, which is a bargain for a player of this quality. And even a player of this age, when you consider that last season Casemiro was close to £60 or £70 million, I would be very, very, very tempted. I think a Kovacic, Casemiro, Bruno Fernandes midfield 3 has pretty much everything that you could want from a midfield. So if I'm Eric Ten Hag, if I'm Manchester United, the board, whoever, the scouts, I would really really be looking into Kovacic, looking into those injuries. Why is he getting those injuries? Can United kind of be sustainable for a couple of years with several 30-year-old midfielders? These are all things which the club needs to look into. Because on the pitch, if he can stay fit and available on a regular basis, he would be an absolute dream for this United midfield. But that's all I've got to say for today's video. Again, apologies for the noise in the background. It's kind of disrupted the video a little bit, and it's why I've got to cut it short, because I've been told the noise is going to continue. But Kovacic, as a footballer, unbelievably good. United should have all their eyes on him. The question is purely over physicality, over kind of longevity, but also availability. So let me know what you think in the comments down below. Apart from that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. Apologies I've had to cut this short. We probably will come back to him in a few weeks' time. Apart from that, thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, I will see you in the next one.